guys, so I'm here today to do a recent favourites video because I realised I haven't done one of these in quite a while and I could honestly backtrack for months and pick out various different things that have brought me joy <laughs> since I last did a favourites video but I'm basically going to focus it on January, February so like the height of winter and some of the stuff I have done or seen or read um, or gotten that has brought me some sort of joy and I'd like to recommend to you as well. So let's kick things off with TV shows and there's one TV show in particular that over the course of January and February I completely binged watched it in its entirety up until it was available, so the first four seasons which are on the UK Amazon Prime, and that is Fresh Off The Boat. I believe there is a fifth season of this, but it's not available in the UK, so I'm eagerly anticipating that. This is an American sitcom following a family of Asian descent, so both the parents immigrated to the US um, when they were in their uh, late teens, early 20s to go to college. Um, and they have had and raised their children in the United States and they've just relocated in order for the father to open up a American style uh, like cowboy restaurant and it's so funny like I don't watch a ton of American sitcoms I don't like a lot of the popular ones um, I, they just don't necessarily um, cater to my sense of humour but I loved Fresh Off The Boat so much. Um, the actors in it are fantastic, all three kids and um, the uh, two adults as well as the side characters and I just fell in love. I watched all four seasons like I mentioned like back to back and they brought me so much like relaxation and joy in between all the stress of work and doing other things so I'm so glad I started watching that and I cannot wait to have access to season five. But the only other show I've really been watching recently is Shetland uh, so the new series of Shetland started on BBC um, a few weeks ago it is a crime drama set on the Shetland Islands of Scotland and Oh, I think we're on the fourth season. I can't remember for certain. I think this is the fourth season, but I've seen all the previous seasons as they've aired and really enjoyed them. And um, again, brilliant acting. Love the lead detective, but particularly love hit one of his like um, uh, like police constables that's like slightly below him. Um, uh, Tosh, she is fantastic, but both of those two characters, love them. Um, the actor that plays the main guy is is really good. What is his name again? Douglas something. Um, let's see. Shetland. Uh, but what else does this say about it? It's very dark, but very good. Um, it keeps you on your toes. Um, so atmospheric. Love the filming. Um, in in the, the sort of Scottish and Shetland uh, setting. It's beautiful. And although it's a crime drama, it always makes me want to go to Shetland. The lead actor is Douglas Henshall and he is just brilliant. So love that show if you haven't checked it out already. Moving on to films, I have three films I've seen this year in the cinema. Um, back on the cinema scene, I think for a while I wasn't going to cinema as much. Um, I saw two of these films alone and one of them with my boyfriend and thought they were all brilliant, so it's been a very good cinema year so far. The one I saw with my boyfriend is If Beale Street Could Talk, uh, which is based on a James Baldwin novel and it is both a love story between a young black couple in America and also the story of the um, man's wrongful imprisonment for a crime he didn't commit. And it's beautiful and what I mean by beautiful is the story is beautiful, James Baldwin's created a beautiful story but the filming, the sound, the music, everything is just like um, a delight for your senses and I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, but by myself I also saw On the Basis of Sex which was brilliant. That This one tells the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, and uh, one of her sort of like pioneering legal cases that she took to court in um, an attempt to end laws that discriminated on the basis of sex in America and I really really enjoyed this one. Don't really know much about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she's not like as famous necessarily in the UK so she's not someone I'm as familiar with, she is um, she still serves on the Supreme Court I think in the UK, in the US and um, I just thought she was fascinating. Oh my goodness, did she do amazing things. The lead actress that played her was fantastic, as was the actor that played her husband. Um, and since then I started listening to a non-fiction audiobook about her because I was so fascinated to learn more. The audiobook's not as good as the film. Um, it's just a little... It's not quite delivering to me what I wanted. It's called The Not Notorious RBG, but I'll review it in full once I've finished it because it might pick up. Um, but I love legal history. I mean, I focus on um, 
the legal side of history in uh, antiquity. So uh, even modern stuff I think is fascinating and important. So I love that film. And on the more comical side of things, I saw Instant Family, which was brilliant. This is one of those films that could have been terrible. It is a comedy film about a couple who decide to uh, foster and hopefully adopt a child and end up fostering a set of three siblings, including a teenager. And it's just, so good. <laughs> it's one of those films I went on and read reviews afterwards from like film critics who were saying, you know, this is cheesy in many ways, it might not have worked in many ways, you know, it's got all of these like tropes in it, but actually it works and they're right, it does work, it was brilliant, I loved it, it was a right kind of escapism for what I was looking for that day, that's often why I go to cinema by myself, is for a bit of escapism, um, so I really, really love that one. But moving away from mainstream media to YouTube, I thought I'd mention a YouTuber that I started watching recently, and that is The Naughty Librarian. So I basically just wanted to mention her channel because I only discovered it a week or so ago, purely through like YouTube recommendations for channels and videos you might like. Um, she is a booktuber and I just ended up binging her videos. I must have just watched like 30 back to back over a few days, loved them, added so many more books to my TBR and I think her personality in particular is so engaging and fun and I just find her videos entertaining to watch um, as, as well as um, informative on literature. She reads a lot of romance, which is something that I've been getting more into recently, so I've um, been able to kind of like get some recommendations from a bit of an expert that I've really enjoyed and I just generally would highly recommend her channel because she deserves way more subscribers. But something that does not involve screens is books and I've read a few good books this year already. I've passed the 20 mark, which is amazing. Um, and I noticed that of those books, I have already read three books by Grace Draven this year. She's the author that I've read the most books by so far in 2019, so I thought she specifically deserved a recommendation in this video. I read my first book by her last year, which was Radiance, which is one of her very famous fantasy romances, and loved it. Radiance is phenomenal, it's very much a romance story set in a fantasy world. So if you're not into romance, um, it's not necessarily the book for you, but if you are even vaguely interested in romance, it is one of the best well done fantasy um, romances or just romance relationships in general that I've ever seen written about. I thought it was built upon so beautifully, gradually, well paced, um, tenderly and I loved it. Loved it. So I read the sequel to that this year, Eidolon. I read Phoenix Unbound and I read Entreat Me which is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast which is my favourite of her books so far although maybe tied with Radiance actually but the, of the ones I've read this year it's my favourite so far and um, yeah I've just discovered an author that I very much enjoy. I think if you enjoy Emma Hamm who's an author I recommended a lot last year you'll enjoy Grace Draven and just generally if you like uh, fantasy romances she is queen. But moving on to some more physical items, I wanted to share with you one of my favourite things I have gotten this year and that is my little collapsible portable mug. So uh, I was going to say coffee mug, obviously it's not specifically for coffee but I use it for coffee because I'm a coffee drinker and my mum bought me this at the beginning of the new term of university because um, I'm teaching a lot this term, um, obviously I'm just busy with other things at university and she wanted to get me something nice that would be useful so I didn't actually have my own reusable cup and although I don't buy um, coffee out and about regularly in cardboard cups. I do occasionally so it's nice to have this and why this is particularly good is because it's so lightweight because this is like a squeezy rubber and right so you take this off it's like magic. I'm sure lots of you have seen these before but if you haven't and it folds away and then that goes there and you've got this and it's so compact. So many of these portable uh, mugs are either heavy or bulky and if I'm carrying my backpack with books in it, my laptop, it's so cumbersome to have a big um, keep cup so I really love this. My flatmate got one and I just thought it looked brilliant. It's made by Stojo and I just think it's brilliant. I make my coffee in the morning before I leave the flat and have it in my little cup and then occasionally we'll top it up whilst I'm at the university. Um, so I would really recommend checking these out if you're looking for a more compact carry cup. Um, and also I want to mention something I can't hold up for you but I will insert a picture or a clip here and that is my book trolley. So I completely copied Lauren in the books with this. Now I had seen them before 
Um, they are trolleys um, sold um, in various different places, including Ikea. I know that's where uh, Lauren got hers. I bought mine on Amazon because it was cheaper and I'm a bit skin. Um, but I treated myself to this and it's um, a little three-tiered trolley I'm using to store my books. Um, I also have some plants in it. I also have my knitting in it because I like having my knitting in it because it's like easily accessible. And um, just thought I'd put a few plants on top because I need more surface space for my growing collection of plants. But it's really nice because I'm able to sort of put all the books that I need to like haul um, on one shelf, which before then I just used to stack on my desk and would take up tons of room. I then have my books that are on my TBR in the second shelf and then I have books I'm currently using for my research or for teaching my classes on the bottom um, shelf. So it, I don't know, like obviously it's basically just like a fancy bookshelf, um, but I'm enjoying the aesthetic of it, I think it looks really nice in my room, it's given me extra storage and um, a good way to organise my kind of books in current use. So when I saw Lauren had got one of these I had a wee look online to try and find a slightly cheaper version. <laughs> Um, and um, I think mine's is around £35 and I love it, money well spent, although I confess I bought it before the news that the pool magazine had gone into administration, meaning I wouldn't get paid for any of the Christmas temping work I did. Um, which is just like my least favourite thing that's happened this year. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I have to laugh a bit because otherwise I'll just cry. Um, but the last thing on my list is knitting. I have discovered a passion for knitting this year. So my mum bought me some wool for Christmas and a family friend gave me some needles and I knitted my first practice scarf and got really into it and then followed it up by treating myself to, and then followed it up by getting my hands on some thicker needles because that was quite a th thin wool with the needles because I wanted to make a chunky knit scarf so this wool looks like this, it's multicoloured I picked it because it reminded me of the colours of mermaids and I actually think it's kind of come out in quite like a scaly effect so I'm really pleased with that because this is a birthday present for my friend Jill who loves mermaids and I love the idea that I can now make practical things for people as gifts um, after this I want to make a hat for my boyfriend um, but in the meantime I'm almost finished the scarf I'm just going to finish this ball of wool which is my fourth one and then I'll be done and um, I adore it and I hope Jill's going to adore it too but just generally I love knitting I've become an obsessive knitter it's so nice, it's so much fun because it's something you can do with your hands and you can just sit there and for me I listen to audiobooks so I love audiobooks anyway and it's really nice to have something I can do that's not fiddling on the computer and doesn't involve me moving around and I can just sit still, apart from my hands obviously, and listen and knit and the two things are using different parts of my brain so I don't find them distracting and I really really enjoy that. I also think it's meant I've listened to more audiobooks this year than normal although after a while it does hurt your hands a bit especially since I'm um, prone to RSI in my um, like fingers and wrists so um, you know <laughs> there's limited time you can spend on it every day but yeah really really love knitting and would highly recommend giving it a shot if you haven't already or if you're looking for something to do whilst listening to audiobooks. <laughs> but those are all of my favourites um, of the year so far. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Something has perhaps caught your attention that you might enjoy. Let me know what has brought you joy in 2019. I would love to know whatever it is. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!